choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. morning syndicate hope all is well uh happy thursday to everybody we're gonna get rolling with my buddy trey honeycutt you hear me dude looks like you muted that hey you you're fine i, hear you I right. love it man well i appreciate you getting on and uh straight from the gym working out to here yes wanna, wanna, <laughs> it's funny like man i'm gonna I'm be honest about it because you know we have that a workout chat and me and zach joke about this all the time and I'm like, we all text and hold each other. And I think you started it. I know you invited me to it. My assumption is you started the group. And uh, we 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 share when we're working out. And I'm like, me and you work out at the same time every day. The difference is you're on the West Coast. <laughs> <laughs> so I really feel bad about myself every morning when you're working out. I'm like, damn, this cat's up at five in the morning working out. And I am not. <laughs> so um, probably a reason why you've been so successful in the insurance business as well um always a great attitude consistent type dude um trey i don't know i don't even i know you've been in the insurance business a while i know we've worked together for a while um one of the largest agencies at ffl for sure integrity partner i know you do tens of thousands of applications a year um so one appreciate you getting on and uh and, and being willing to share with us dude Look, looking forward to learning and you were requested by the way oh wow, just so you know cool. yeah well, so. <laughs> well thanks for having me yeah, you know, I, I think we made a good point just starting out. If you're going to start something, it was easy to start a workout group because I wasn't working out. And I was like, well, who works out? <laughs> I'll just put them in the group, <laughs> which is really a smart thing to do because then I had to work out because I knew you guys would be posting something. So yeah, if you, you want to do something big, just find people that are doing something. <laughs> start working How long have you been working out? We're not, we're not even going down to insurance yet. I'm, I'm not curious. How long have you been? September 1st, at least six days a week I've been going. What's your yeah, result so far? So I'm down 30 pounds. So down 30. We're good. Sick. You look and I'm, dude, completely I'm completely different already. Oh, thanks. Yeah, when I when I started, I could only do like two push-ups. Yeah. And uh now I could do 57 in a row. So wow. which is pretty good. You know, that's that is damn good. I try yeah. my best to do like a hundred, and I'm not the guy that can do it every day. For some reason, I just haven't figured out how to I work out about every day. But I'll I want to do like I want to be able to do a hundred push-ups in a row. And yeah. I can't, and and I can't even, I want to get on a groove where I do a hundred a day every day. And I just, somehow I'm like, man, I, one day, I, maybe we need to start a push up thing in the group. Yeah. Well, not a lot of people could do a hundred in a row. That would make, Oh, no. dude, I can't do, if, I, if you like, we're like, I got a million bucks. I could probably figure out how to do 57. But when I get to a hundred, usually the first one I do like 35 and I'm like, Ooh, I'm a little tired. The second one I can push 50, I can get around 50. Yeah, but I don't. I don't know, dude. That's impressive. Thank you. <laughs> With all that, how does it apply to insurance? Because to me, getting in shape. Because as you know, I had a belly a few years ago too, and uh, I applied. I applied a lot of what I did in insurance to my health side. Is that is that true for you at all? In any way? Like, is there a relation you see? Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people don't know this part, but I um, in two thousand eight, I lost hundred pounds. And I was, I was, I was skinny like I am now, and I got a hundred pounds lighter. And um, wow, I learned so much doing that. I kept that off for five years, and then I was doing CrossFit, and I got hurt. And I just, you know, when I quit the gym, I quit the gym. <laughs> 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 There's two things like I, I tore my quadriceps, so 
So there's two things that really help, like a, a big bag of ice. You know, I just put yeah. it on my leg, and then uh, ice cream. <laughs> so I, was, <laughs> I, was, I was feeling the pain from both sides. But the, but the process of doing that is kind of twofold. You know, when you're when you're doing something big and you're consistent and you're mm-hmm. consistently doing the activity, it doesn't seem like a lot looking back on it. But when yeah. you're going through it, it's yeah. hard. But looking back, it doesn't seem like, like if I say to lose 100 pounds, you know, all I did was eat six small meals a day with a lean protein and a complex carbohydrate and work out 30, 45 minutes, six days a week. For a year. how long? For a year. Okay. That's all I did. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't seem, looking back on it, it's like, that doesn't seem that hard. Yeah. But in the midst of doing it, and you forget all the struggle as time goes by, in the midst of doing it, though, it is, you know, it takes consistency. But the, but the problem is when you've accomplished something and you look back, it's really easy to be like, well, I'm not consistent enough, so I blew it. This happens all the time with a diet. Oh, I blew my diet. I had pizza on Wednesday. I, I, whatever. I'm just yeah, going to yeah. – I'll start again on Monday. <laughs> let, me, let me just start over on Monday. And I, I got in that trap for like five years after I gave the weight back. I was doing that for like five years. And, um, you know, running insurance appointments, that was a struggle because I didn't – if anybody wants to know how to lose weight, which I'm only down 30 pounds, I, I can't be an expert. But I'll tell you, there's a, there's a trick. The trick is cooking your own food and carrying it with you. That's it, you know. Yeah, Just because yeah. it's Chick Fil A, it's chicken. It's it, that's not. <laughs> you still get fat eating Chick Fil A all the time. So, yeah, um, so yeah, I, I, that does apply to insurance because the thing I took from insurance was some days the activity feels like it's going to pay off really great. And you feel like you're killing it. And then some days the same activity feels like you're, you didn't do very much. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you just check the box and you said, I did what I was supposed to do. And if you could do that consistently long enough, it's bound to work out over time. Most people just don't string enough wins together long enough. That's yeah. the trick, especially on the agency building side of it. Mm-hmm. Because if you can, if you can do it long enough where people can watch you and go, Trey's still doing the same thing. He's still doing the same thing. He was doing before he hasn't changed or deviated i'm going to follow what he's doing yeah, and then yeah. you get a compound effect to it uh, but what most people do is they do a lot and then they slow down they make some money they go on vacation you yeah, know yeah. they 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 kill it then they have two weeks where it doesn't go good they get their own head and they start second guessing everything slow down five days off in a row all that stuff you know yeah. that's that's what screws everybody up Great. but uh consistent where- career, you could win at anything yeah. Let's give them the end result first. Where are you at now, team wise? Like, how many agents? What kind of production y'all doing? So last month, uh, last so so this month we'll end around three million in in production, okay. and um, about six hundred agents. A little shy of six hundred agents, I believe. Okay. So let's let's right. talk about how you got there, dude. Because when we met, hell, I think. How long have I? How, how long have we been working together? Do you know? Like when did you start? It's been a while, but I don't remember. Well, I've been working with you longer than you've been working with me because <laughs> yeah. I was following you before you knew who I was. <laughs> but uh, but I probably met you in 2016. But okay. I was uh, I was there in 14. I was just trying to figure it out. Okay, cool. So earlier, were you at the previous? When did you start insurance? So my first day at the previous company uh-huh. uh, was Andrew Taylor's last day. Shut up. It was the day before. Yeah. No so, way, and, dude. So, so this is what happened. So we had a, I don't remember what they call those meetings. I think we called them hot spots, but yeah. The, so, uh, uh, God, I know what you're talking about. The war, the war, war part, war part, whatever they were. Yeah. So, so the last hot spot meeting that Andrew went to was my first meeting ever. And there no was a kidding. suggestion box. And he coerced everybody in the room to put in the suggestion box that the meetings were too long, knowing that the next day he was going to leave. And then before he left, he goes, hey, we live in the same city. You, you should get my phone number in case you need uh, Mutual of Omaha applications. You could you could find me. And I was like, no. OK. So then what was happening was he was running business in, in the same place as me. And every time I would get there and he beat me to the appointment, I couldn't replace his stuff. And then uh, if I beat him to the appointment, he would replace mine. <laughs> that went on for like eight or nine months. And then finally, I was like, I got I to gotta call this guy and ask for some mutual of Omaha applications. <laughs> That's funny. So you stayed over there for a minute. Yep. Got for it. For a little while. Who hired you? How'd you get here? 
Um, do I know how to get here at FFL or how yeah, to get no, there? No, originally into the business. Do yeah. I know? Do I know who, who uh, here or not? Yeah, maybe. So, so when I worked at the gym back mm -hmm. when I lost all that weight, there was a girl there that was uh, she was selling insurance, and then she talked me into going to a meeting, and um, that was like way back, right? But she yeah. kept lying about her results and she didn't have to lie. Her results were good enough, but she was trying to make it look like she was, you know, Warren Buffett or something. <laughs> and, and based on my opinion of her, I decided not to do it. But since she took me to a meeting, she introduced me to George Wilson. And oh, then okay. me and George stayed in touch and all that time went by. And um, I was like, well, the, you know, that was during like the recession and people are still making money in insurance. Right. So I was like, yeah. I think I'm going to call that guy back about the insurance. So years went by and I called him back and then I had to get licensed again because I'd actually have my license. So you and let it lapse. Actually, I let it lapse. I did too, bro. Nice. Except mine, I didn't have to retest because I was in like, the, there was like a 30 or 60 day window. And nice. when, I, when Jeremy hit me back, mine had just lapsed like two weeks prior. So I got to like just pay i pay a fee or a fine or whatever and, and, and keep nice. it i didn't have to retake the test but well i yeah. had to pass the puppy again but it was no big deal i got it done and yeah. then, you know the first meeting back i i meet andrew and then and then the next day they had a big meeting like a like a regional like a, that's where they had the war party meeting oh yeah, yeah, and yeah. There were, okay there were less people at the war party than there were at the local meeting the night before and i was like what the heck is going on you know and uh yeah and then i and then what happened with what happened was there was nobody left to teach me how to sell insurance. And I wasn't interested in building or recruiting or any of that stuff. Yeah. I just wanted to like stop getting no sales because I'd run appointments like crazy. I couldn't close the front door. I couldn't get anybody to buy it. So <laughs> what happened was there was all this murmuring going on about family first. So I just looked it up on the internet and all the conference calls were unlocked. So I would, I would listen to the conference calls and you guys would talk about, you know, the cash back option and, and, and how to sell that and, you know, how to get right into the appointment and financial inventory and all this stuff. And so I started applying that stuff and I started making sales and I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> you know? So uh, I love it. How, how long, <laughs> how long were you like not good at selling? Dude, a while. I was good at setting appointments. I, I could set appointments right away. No way. Okay. But, but I couldn't, once I got there, it was just like, we, we became friends they like me. I like them. They weren't ever going to buy anything. But, that was the problem. You know, I got into that real quick. And like my first appointment, I was an hour late for it, <laughs> which was, which was really bad, which is a telltale side of my career. Cause, cause I'm a terrible, <laughs> I'm a terrible driver. So I just, I drive slow and I get lost. And so I show up an hour late for this appointment and I call the lady and, um, I go, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like I'm at the door, she's not answering. And I'm like, I'm like an hour late, I'm so sorry. And I go, thank God you're still here because I heard her phone ring on the inside. And she goes, yeah, I'm here, I'm on house arrest. I can't no. go here. And I was like, oh crap. And then, I, <laughs> and then I sold her and I figured out you can't sell people on house arrest. She had a felony, you know. So <laughs> that was funny. I love it. And then my next sale, yeah. which is a funny story. So I didn't have any money, right? Like I didn't have, I had a credit card with like $40 left on it. I got the change for my couch cushions to get the gas to go to the thing. And I was like, this was going to be my breakthrough. I'm going to make this one work. John is 78 years old. I'm going to go see John sell a bunch of insurance. So I, I drive down there and I pull up and he's got like this handicap van with like, with like handicap stickers and like, and like, uh, like the world's about to end because, you know, we're going to get hit by Planet X and all this stuff. It was like total conspiracy <laughs> theory stuff on this van. Like, John is my type of guy. Yeah. So I knock on the door. I go in. He he has a wife who's like 34 years old. He's 78. And she's from like wow. Thailand. And um, we're going through the thing. And and I'm like, what's she going to do if, if you die, John? Like, like, what, what's she going to do? And he goes, I don't know. So I asked her and she goes, I have to go back to Thailand. And I go, but you have kids. She's like, yeah, I have to take my kids back to Thailand. And, and I go, John, is that what you want to have happen? And he's like, no. And I'm like, well, we need to get this policy right now. And it was $1,300 a month because I didn't, I was fully underwritten. That's how I set it up because nobody told me any different. Uh... And so I'm like, I'm about to get paid. 
So I'm like, he's like, whatever my baby wants, my baby gets. And I was like, John, go get your checkbook. And he wrote a check for 1300 you know, and it was fully underwritten. And I'm like, I just got paid. Like, I'm calculating the commission. So I'm like, look at all yeah. this money I just made. And I had $40 left on my credit card. So I went and did all you could eat sushi. Because <laughs> <laughs> I had to celebrate, you know. And um, weight, weight loss tip number two, don't use food to celebrate. So, so I was celebrating with some all you can eat sushi and we sent the app in and this was in 2013, 2014. And back then when you'd call the insurance companies, they weren't as strict as they are. Like now they don't tell you nothing, you know, yeah, yeah, but this yeah. particular underwriter calls me like three days later. <clears throat> he goes, Hey, that, that application you sent in on John. And I go, yeah. And he starts laughing and he goes, that one's not going to fly. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And he goes, yeah, he probably has Alzheimer's, and I'm sure he has cancer right now. That's what he told me. He's not allowed to say that. I'm not going to say yeah. what he Yeah, we but used to get all kinds of dirt, bro, back then. <laughs> but I, I think he was just so blown away that I sent that in. And the first thing I thought was like, crap, I spent my last $60 on sushi. <laughs> like, what am I doing? <clears throat> so, uh, but I found a way to get some more leads and keep going. Lots to learn from that story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I never did that again. Uh, maybe the ones that don't do life are like, what are they even talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Some inside stuff. <laughs> That's funny. What um so you came into this. What was your background? What did you do before insurance? So I was in the Marines for a while, yeah. Yeah. Uh, six years. And then um a lot of that time I was in the reserves. So while I was in the reserves, my full time job was I, I was a Culligan man, so I sold water softeners. And Culligan I always man? did. What's that word mean? Culligan man. I never like heard of Culligan man. Like uh, I'm Culligan cool water. Oh really? Uh, yeah, you're you're not old enough. If anybody here is over Dude, 60, we're the same age, here. bro, aren't we? Well, yeah, but I was, you know, I worked for the company. <laughs> if I didn't work for the company. I wouldn't know it either. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. But but any 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 baby boomer knows it. it it's like the third most recognized slogan for baby boomers is "Hey Culligan man" after Avon calling. But uh, it, they sell water softeners and bottle water and stuff like that, you know. And um, yeah, it's big in the Midwest. And there was a couple of dealerships in California. So that's where I worked. So I did that. And then I, I never really made enough money doing that. So I always had some sort of side hustle. I did a lot of multi-level marketing on the side. Um, and I basically did that from the time I was 18 until, you know, I found insurance. And so... That's pretty much my background. So I, mid I was, mid thirties, you found insurance then, right? We're, we're about the same time, yeah. same time frame. Yeah, yeah, I think I was. Uh, <clears throat> let's see, seven, eight. I was thirty six when I when I okay. found insurance. Cool. So, yeah, I was thirty five. I just turned forty five uh, two days ago. Did you? So, yep. I made right. it. Well, happy birthday! <laughs> Thanks. I turned forty six in like two weeks. Nice. Well, you look a lot yeah. younger than me, so you're doing yeah. good. Just because I keep it short, dude. If I grew it long, mine would be as gray as yours. Yeah. It's been gray like this since I was 15, too. Really? Yeah. It's weird. Not like this, but I started getting gray hair when I was 15. Yeah. But I don't think I'm ever going to go bald. I no. Don't. See, I am. Like, I got back, back there. It's like, man, what do you do? Yeah. Because I'm tall, so most people don't see it. Nobody can see that, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, it looks good on you. Yeah. So on me, it just I know this doesn't have anything to do with insurance, but. Who cares? Maybe That's why I like I like doing this. It messes people up. They love it or they hate it. Whatever. <laughs> so when I was in so when I was in boot camp, they shaved your head. Yeah. And the first thing they did when they shaved my head was like right here. I have a dent. It, it's deep, and it's it's discolored. It's purple and green and like spotted. And I guess when I was a baby, I had like a little horn for a while until I was like one and a half, and then it like turned into a a dent. So yeah. if I ever lose my hair, I'm in trouble because it's still discolored. You can see it if you look. Wow. I'm, like, I'm going to look like, you know, something from Star Trek or something. I'm not trying to do that. <laughs> oh, man. So let, let's give them a little more on the journey, dude. You go from broke, not, yeah. not selling policies to 600 agents. Obviously, there's a story in the middle. Um, I remember the first, the first time I – first memory I have you were actually like working for Andrew at yes. one stage, right? You were like a recruiter, if I remember right. That's that's the furthest back I remember. I don't remember when that was, but how do you how does one get from 
not wanting to recruit, barely being able to sell to you. Event, you definitely learned how to sell. I mean, you yeah. sold some insurance. Um, yep. So talk about either side of it, that, that trade, because that's where everybody's, I, I think the reason, yeah, same reason you might've been following me or someone else, same reason I followed Matt and some of those other guys, you know what I mean? Andrew, Paul, those guys was like, I was trying to figure out how they were doing it, you know? And I, right. I, I felt like I was in the mud still and things were going really slow and I'm two and a half years in and still not figured it out. You know, things click for me. So how, how do you, how do you get there, dude? How, how can so we help happened? people get there? Well, what's really interesting is like life will keep presenting you the same lesson over and over until you figure it out. It's like Groundhog Day. So I found myself in the cycle of like just failure for a long time and, and getting emotional and screwing things up and walking away from opportunities and, um, you know, not expressing my feelings properly. And like like I had all these traps that I would fall into over the years. Yep. And the thing that happened was when I started with FFL and I met Andrew Taylor, um, my whole goal was just to sell insurance. I didn't have any desire to build anything. I just wanted to sell. I wanted to stay away from the whole building thing. And Andrew was super patient with me. So my first 90 days in, in FFL, I did issue 45. So that was more money than I'd ever made doing anything. And what was interesting about that is I felt like I was failing most of the time. It didn't feel like I was doing good. Yeah. It's just I kept showing up and I would get some big sales that literally anyone would have gotten. And that was kind of like that was kind of like Andrew's deal. Like he really got me to understand that, you know, 25 percent of the time, the people will buy it no matter what. Like you could yeah. close the sale by saying, hey, you wouldn't want to buy it, would you? And they'll go, yeah, stupid. That's why you're here. And they'll buy it. <laughs> Now, I don't suggest yeah. you close them like that, but once I figured out if you put the numbers in your favor, a certain amount of them will buy it no matter what. Like you'll run into people that they have 11 other insurance policies. They don't really make a lot of money. They'll have all the insurance policies out when you get there and they'll buy yours too and you don't have to replace nothing. Yeah. And they'll keep it. And it's weird. It doesn't make sense, but they do. And so I was just, I made up my mind early on, I can make a living off of these ones. <laughs> and so... And then 25% of the people won't buy no matter what. And then the other 50, as your skills get better, you can start to close them and overcome the objections before you get them and set yeah. the table right and all that stuff. Yeah. But what happened was after that first 90 days in 2015, my mom had had cancer and her cancer came back. And so when her cancer came back, um, I didn't do much. I mean, I, I'm an only child. My father had already passed away. And all I had was my mom. So I was just driving back and forth doing, you know, chemo and radiation with mama. And uh, one day a week, Andrew might see me at the office dialing, but I didn't do a whole lot. So that that whole 2015, I issued like 70,000 for the whole year. Got it. And what endeared me to family first was Andrew didn't treat me any different yeah. than he did when I sold 45,000 and a quarter. <laughs> You know, he treated me the exact same way. And the reason why he was able to treat me the same way was because he sold a lot of insurance himself. Yeah. So it didn't matter if I sold a lot or a little, he could just be cool with me. So it was very freeing because I was used to being in organizations where, you know, if you're, if, if, if you're producing, they love you. And if you're not, you're, you know, you're, you're off to the, they don't pay any attention to you. Yeah. And Andrew didn't do it that way at all. So my mom ended up passing away. And in 2016, I was super depressed. I was, I was buried in chargebacks. Um, you know, I know there's a lot of insurance producers on here, so I'll just tell you the, the facts of it. Yeah. Like what I was doing, I was good at selling. I, the problem was I was too good at selling. That's actually what would happen. So I would show somebody a $400 premium with their income being $2,500 a month. Yeah. And I'd get them to do it until like two days later. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Holy crap, yeah. I can't afford that. So I had to I had to stop selling so hard and just letting it be what it is. Like that was a big thing that I had to do early on. It's like yeah. I'm not here trying to build rapport and get you to love me and be the overcome every objection and cram this thing down your throat. I'm I'm trying yeah. to find something comfortable that you actually want. And if you don't want it, I need to have enough appointments where I can walk away from it and not force it. Because if I'm running around with seven appointments and the first four don't show up, yeah. and then the, the 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 fifth one the wife isn't there, the last two. I got to sell it come heck or high water. And that was always a bad situation to be in. So, so in 2016, mom passed away. 
I was super depressed. I was up in my house. And then Andrew just calls me out of the blue and says, hey, um, if I pay you hourly, will you come work at the office? And when I look back at that and see, it's hard for me to ever get mad at Andrew because, I, you know, I can never get mad at Andrew because I think about that scenario. And yeah. the truth is, he really didn't need my help. He actually really didn't need me. Yeah. He was just trying to help. Like he was doing it more for me than he was for him. And I remember when I got there, I was like, well, what do you want me to do? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> what what can you do? I just need you to do it 30 hours a week. And, and it was literally just being, he was trying to help me. Yeah. And um, the rule was though, I had recruited one guy at, by that time. And he's like, hey, you're not allowed to work with your team during work hours. You have to do that after hours. You can only work with my team and anything I want you to do. And you're not allowed to talk on the phone. Anything to do with your business has to be my business. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, cool. So um, so he's like, what can you do? And I'm like, well, I can recruit. <laughs> and he's like, well, I need a recruiter. And then that's how it started. And, um, you know, and a lot of stuff came out of that, just that initial 2016 to 2017. So, so when I started with Andrew, he was doing about 180 a month as a team. Yeah. And within three months, he was doing 350 a month. Yeah. So he doubled. And, um, by the end of that year, he was around 800 a month. And, yeah. um, and then he took me to Waba Grill and said, hey, you got to go back out and do this on your own because I feel bad. So that's how I got back full time. <laughs> got it. That's but, wild. Uh, Y'all have been a lethal team together, dude. Um, yeah. You and I ran the same play in a lot of ways. We're adding value to a bigger picture. You know, we, yes. uh, we talked about that in the past. Um, what, what, yes. uh, talk about that a lot. I, I mean, I think you know where I'm going with it. And you've, you've right. been stupid valuable, not only to his group, but the company. And, you know, I think a lot of people miss that. Well, yeah. and I see it a lot now. You know, everybody's so worried about their own business and their own personal brand. And I, I think that's a mistake on how to do it. All I was trying to do the whole time is there's there's three things I was always trying to run from. The first one is like greed. Like, I don't want to be greedy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to become prideful and egotistical. And I don't want to have a scarcity mentality because that scarcity mentality will screw you up. So so a lot of what I was trying to do was just be helpful to everybody so that my attitude was right. Like I was trying to cheer everybody on, help everybody I could. Didn't matter whose team they were on. Um, add value to, to, to Andrew. And that came from a podcast that I heard you do where you talked about the value of having a right hand man. And that was the one thing Andrew didn't have until I started okay. working for him. Because he was in the field selling and then he's working with his team. And what I figured out is the day shift, I could be working with the team and the night yeah. shift, I could be selling and then he could be working with the team. And so it was kind of like mom and dad, you know. Yeah. So yeah. so what would happen is Andrew would piss people off and then I'd call him up and I'd say, hey, don't, don't mind him. He just loves you. He just wants what's best for you. He just wants you to win. That's yeah. all. He just doesn't know how to say it. What he's really trying to say is, hey, I care about you. And I don't want to see you fail. And his advice is right. I mean, you'd agree his advice is right. It just wasn't the right delivery. And then I'd piss him off. And then they'd go back to Andrew and Andrew would be like, well, don't mind Trey. Trey just loves you. You just try to do the best for you. To you. <laughs> so, <laughs> but the value of that is so, uh, so incredible. And knowing that you have somebody that's going to say good things behind your back all the time. That's the other thing we did real well. So it gave him the grace to screw stuff up. It gave him the grace to be more direct with people because I would follow up behind them and I would lighten the load, you know? Yeah. And um, so we, we learned how to tag team it that way. And that helped a ton. Um, and then the other thing that I learned from that experience is you don't have to, what what we got really good at in that, in that time was promoting. Yeah. Like we didn't have to be everything to everybody. We didn't have to provide all the training. We just need to get good at telling other people's stories and pointing to the training. And that changed a lot because the because the the culture back then was like you sit in the corner, you call these resumes, you talk them into doing insurance, you talk them into working with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you send them the class, you follow up with them 75 times and you get them to pass the test. Yeah. <clears throat> but what we tried to do was we set up some tools that would like literally talk the people out of it so that the people we actually talked to were people that knew the good, bad, and the ugly, and they still wanted to do insurance. Right. And so we figured out that the biggest waste of time is spending time with people who really don't want to do it because it's easier to run with a thousand people than it is to carry two. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so we just set up some some filters to get rid of the ones that weren't going to do it anyway. Like, like people used to say, like, do, do we have to buy leads? And and what I would do is I would come up with like all these fancy ways to make leads sound. Oh yeah, but you want to buy leads because of this, this, and this. Yeah. And how could you do it without leads? It's impossible to sell insurance without leads. <laughs> yeah. And then I heard somebody ask Andrew, and he just goes, "Yes, <laughs> that's it. That's it." And if he would fight. He'd be like, "It's probably not for you, dude." And I'm like, "That's an option, huh?" You know. <laughs> <laughs> The simplicity of it. The simplicity of it was, was yeah. truly genius, you know? Yeah. Yeah, y'all y'all killed it. I remember, like, this is fun. This is me and you. Most people won't get this. But coming up, it was kind of like old school East Coast, West Coast rap. Like, we were over here and y'all were over there. And we we're trying to figure each other out. And, like, do we have, do we, we're, like, competing. But we're in the same company. It was so interesting. And we used to all, me and Tillamette ran like you and Andrew. It's very similar. Mm -hmm. And we used to be like, dude, those fools can get people in a room, bro. They can get like, we had a like, we were proud of. We could get like a higher. We could get people selling a bunch of insurance. Mm -hmm. but we didn't know how to hire like y'all hired. I'm like, dude, if we could just figure out how to hire like they do, we we'd be ruthless. And with time, as you know, dude, Andrew smoked us all with time. I mean, the the volume they y'all crank out now is bananas. You know, and it all came from that promotionary, that period of time where you guys got so good and everybody worked as such a group, you yes. and Steve and him, all that, like, and Grady it was, and everybody. It yeah, was, Grady, like, nuts. And you all added different pieces to the puzzle. Yeah. That was, like, so intriguing to me, um, watching that develop. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're always trying to, to, after our meeting this weekend, that's, we have we have a manager's meeting this afternoon. That's some of the stuff we're going to be talking about is literally highlighting kind of what y'all did, what we talked about Sunday, going like, this is how it should work. If everybody's rowing the boat in the same direction, y'all killed that. And, yeah. it, and, it, and it ended up showing up in the, the number of writers, the agents getting paid, growing, managers, integrity partners. I mean, it's it, it was fun to watch. Uh, well, it was frustrating because we couldn't figure it out, but it was also fun. Well, yeah. what was neat about it was we we learned early on, like, the easiest, because everybody was pitching in, yeah. we all had more time. Yeah. So, yeah. We, so rather than compete, we were just cooperating with each other and making yeah. everybody else look good. And we literally created this, like, all boats rise with the tide thing. Yeah. And, and no the, one needed to be the kingpin. That's no. what I love. No one cared. Yeah. Everybody took don't care if he's called the janitor. He doesn't care. Exactly. <laughs> Dude, that is true. Yeah. But, but what I what I really thought was interesting uh, was just, yeah, just how much we work together on it all. Yeah. And and if we could get back to that, you know, that's. We're getting there, dude, as a company yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, as, as a, a company, company now. Right. now. We all realize, like, dang, this does work better when <laughs> we all do it together. This is, can you see that on the screen? This is uh, yes. At, Talk about that. Y'all did have a, and hell, probably oh, still yeah. do. Oh, um, yeah. So we we started, I started the yeah. first Facebook group. Yeah. Uh, the first Joe, So Joe, if Facebook you don't know group. this, do you know Joe Camper? Do you know him at mm -hmm. all? All right. So he runs a big PNC deal. Him and Tony Merwin kind of partnered together to do this Facebook group. Oh, I met Joe. Yeah, I met yeah. Joe in uh, Nashville. Yeah. Yeah, he'd have been wearing a, probably a basketball jersey. Yes. On, uh, yes. He's like a Facebook group junkie in all the best ways. I mean, that like in the most positive way ever. He runs like 800 of them. He generates a ton of business and revenue and relationships and um you know he's he's a big uh believer in in, in the power of these groups so that's his his questions asked because he he believes in it very similar to, to your thought process well what happened so it's like the first post i posted on that facebook group was hey this is a good place where we could all collaborate and you know whatever and what the usa group is that what in it was? the USA group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. And then I, I invited a bunch of people to it. I posted that first post that I put hashtag team sport. And uh, no way. and that and that played out. So so what happened was we took some of the initial training and we put it in the files of that group. And then what we would do is we'd invite all the people to it. And then whenever somebody would be like, hey, how do you handle this objection? I would take a video of Dom booking appointments and I would, I would tag them on it, you know, cause it was Got in the it. feed yep. and I would just yep. tag people on it, tag people on it. And the TNL, 
hey, TNL's about to start. I would tag people on and tag people. And then it got to the point where we recruited this guy. And this is what's interesting. Some of your biggest breakthroughs will come from stuff like God's greatest gifts come in ugly wrapping paper. So the first guy to ever roll me a bunch of debt, mm-hmm. <laughs> he did something for all of FFL that nobody nobody actually knows who started this, but it was this agent that was actually a scumbag that rolled me a bunch of debt. Yep. But but he was the first person to ever post a picture with a client. And everybody's like, that's genius. I'm going to do that. So our Facebook group was blowing up because no on Saturday, yeah. you would see all these people just posting pictures with their clients. Yeah. So there was all this content and everybody started cheering everybody on. And it got to the point where people didn't really know. Like Albert Lau one time calls me up and he goes, he'd, he'd been here like a year. And he goes, hey, why didn't you tell me? And I go, tell you what? He goes, I'm not on your team. And I go, no. He goes, I thought you were above Jack. And I'm like, no, I'm not above Jack. He's like, why do you help me all the time? I go, I, I, I don't know. I just, I help everybody. And he goes, where did I come from? They didn't do that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And that's like the best compliment I ever got. Yeah. You know, because in the Facebook group, if he posted anything, I was like, go guys, go. And all this is, you'd have thought for sure I was getting paid on it, but I wasn't. But I was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yes, yes, you were, bro. Yep. And then yes, they would were. do more. So it's true. Um, How many did y'all get that group up to? Uh, it's forty something thousand in there now. It's I think crazy, dude. We tried so hard. Mike and I were like, "Yo, we got to copy this." And we both are like, Facebook group hate. Like it's not, and you know, we aren't yeah. the best tech. We aren't the techies. Y'all are. <laughs> we're like, we got to do this. And it was just what it, it was tough. We we built it up a decent amount, but certainly not forty thousand. Holy moly! Well, well, Andrew was relentless about um, just posting positive content in there. And yeah. like, if I ever called him up with a positive story or something that went not so good, like I had no show to my first three, and then <laughs> you know my last one, I sold it for two hundred a month. If I had a story like that, he'd be like, post it in the group, post it in the group. Yeah. And yeah. so we just got to the point where everybody was doing that. And then Grady came along. And and what's interesting about that is that group is what recruited Grady because he was in there initially without an insurance license. Just I remember Andrew. Andrew used to talk about that. He's like, we just built this group and we just add everyone to it. And that was like a recruiting tool for y'all. Dude, that was a big part of it. Yeah. It was like, okay, I get people on the hook. They're not quite ready to make a decision. But if I put them in this group, they can marinate. That's what you say. We'll put them in the group. We'll let them marinate. And eventually they would come around. So even agents that weren't real productive right off the bat, like I'm staying in touch. I'm not. So so what we used to talk to people about was the point of the system is so that you can spend more time with people, not less time. Like a lot of people looked at it like, okay, well, this video teaches them this and this video teaches them that. So I don't have to do anything. The way I looked at it was this will talk to them about insurance. It'll give me a chance to build a relationship with the people and get them to stay. Yeah, so yeah. all of my conversation was about them and their goals and their life and all that stuff. And then in the group, once I got people as far as I could get them, they, they'd sit in the group and they'd, they'd follow us. They'd like us. We'd like them. They'd like stuff. And eventually they'd come around and I started using it like a fishing pole. So what I would do is I'd put something out in the group and I'd watch and I'd be like, OK, that person liked it. That person commented. Sonia. Oh, I haven't heard from Sonia like four months. I better call Sonia. So I'd call her up and I'd be like, hey, did you see that about so-and-so? Like he made like this much money in an hour. Isn't that crazy? And she's like, yeah, I've been meaning to call you. I really do need to take this serious again. And I would get her back engaged. Um, And I think that's really the part of social media where people, because the other part of social media, John, that kind of happened was like people are posting but they're relying on their posts to get like people to jump in the boat. Like they want all yep. the fish to just like, what are you doing for recruiting, Mary? Oh, I'm posting, yeah. but you ain't talking to nobody. But if you talk to people, but you don't put the bite on them and then you continuously post, that'll build their belief over time. And then they will jump in the boat, you know, but people yep. get it backwards. They post, post, post and never actually talk to anyone. And if they did, they would figure out that there's a lot of people that want to reach out to you. They just don't know how to start the conversation. So this isn't something that takes the place of, of having conversations and building relationships. It's just complementary to it. Yeah. That's the right way to facilitates look at it. it for you. Yeah. So exactly. I love it. What do you see, man? Give some advice. Obviously you've talked to, 
I would guess thousands of agents over the years at this point. Um, what's some advice you can give to those that like the ones that just don't make it, they quit, they give up. What do you, what do you see most do wrong, man? Like what can, what advice will you give to people that are like, they're in this stage where they've not yet figured it out. They don't know if insurance is for them or even people that are watching that are successful, trying to pass the message to their agents. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they feel stuck. They don't see what you and I see today. Um, right. what, do you, what do you see as some of the biggest mistakes people make there? And what, what advice can you give to them? Well, I had this agent call me the other day and she's like, I have four agents and none of them sell. Does that happen to you? And I'm like, I have <laughs> thousands that don't sell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, is to me and Only they knew. Not doing anything. Yeah. Like just understanding the, the right expectations around it and what it looks like. And where people mess it up is they literally stop feet from gold like there's acres of diamonds and they just stop a little bit short and if there's one thing i've learned is it's always darkest before the dawn and every breakthrough i've ever had is like literally a couple days after i was getting ready to end it i, I don't mean like kill myself i wasn't gonna come yeah. but like in my career you know like there were several times where you just have to have a good sense of humor and a bad memory like i quit this thing thousands of times i love that dude but what would I never happen, heard you say that before. The next day I wake up and I'm like, I know there was something I was supposed to do today. But why I was supposed to dial. And I forget that the night before I throw in the towel. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the best thing. It's just a good sense of humor, a bad memory. It's never as bad as you think it is. It's never as good as you think it is. That's definitely most, true. Most people are giving up and, and making these permanent decisions based on temporary emotions from what they think things are. And they're, they're usually wrong, you know? It's yeah. like off their perceived, what they're perceiving, which they've been wrong about other things, you know? That's one that's one of the downfalls about social media is all you get to see is people's highlight reels. So you're just going on there and you're like, well, Vivian, you know, she helped 74 families in two days. Yeah. I only helped three. I'm a failure and I'm losing. <laughs> no, you didn't. If you... People are underestimating what it looks like a year, two, three years down the road, because if you can stay in this consistent and persistent with a consistent message and not change all the time, that people can believe that you know where you're going, you know how you're going to get there, they'll follow. And what's interesting is you'll inevitably find people that are better at it than you are. Like it has to work. Yeah. It, it always works. The people change, the way we get the people change, the way we tell the story changes, but ultimately the story is always the same. It's always somebody heard about this business from their friend and then they went and they weren't very good at it. And then they got good at it. And then they told a few people and a bunch of them quit, but they let them to somebody else. And then that person took off and now they're successful. That's the way it always works. It works like that in every organization. What I could tell you that people neglect a lot is the power of warm market recruiting. Warm market recruiting is the answer to agency building. It's not recruiting a bunch of strangers and getting them to go do it. It's the only reason to recruit strangers, people you don't know in this business, is to help them recruit people they do know in the business. Yes, because people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And trust is the most important thing. And a lot of times when you're recruiting somebody that didn't do well at another agency or whatever that you don't have a relationship with, they don't trust you yet. So they're not fired up to go jump through all the and do all the stuff. It takes time for, for them to believe. So the best thing you can do is when you're having problems in this business, just understand that sometimes the problems aren't meant for you. They're meant for the people that are watching you. So if you can just perform well under pressure in those situations, what that's doing is that's pulling all the right people your direction. Even if you can't see it, it's always working. So that's my best. See, that was a big one too, right there. I don't know if y'all meant that. So the problem isn't necessarily meant for you. It's meant for the people watching you. Yes. <sighs> yeah. And I, you know, I learned that. Like, Dude. And where I, I like learned that, that was, um, so when my mom was sick, um, I went to a conference, maybe it was, maybe it was a church service. And um, the pastor said something like that. And I thought about my mom and how great of an attitude she had in the face of basically, you know, a terminal illness. I mean, my mom was given six months and she ended up living three years. 
And she never complained. She never acted sicker than she was. She always acted like she had more energy than she did. And she was just tough. And I, I think about why she did that. It wasn't, it, it was so I could see it, you know, so, yeah. so I could see what grace under pressure looks like. And I, I just carry that with me. That's, that's the way I look at this. And, you know, when I get a charge back, you're not seeing me mope because I think about how my mom was when she had, yeah. you know, a tumor wrapped around her bronchial tube, you know? Jeez. So that's one of the deepest, coolest statements I've ever heard. Honestly, it was really, it's really neat. I, I love that. Um, give them, give them one. I always want to give, I always end with like, give them something. Again, it is tactical Thursday. It's like, give them something tactical that they can implement today just from a general standpoint that you can go out and do this today and it can start to change the trajectory, the result, the, you know, the, the direction. If you had to give them one thing, what would it be? And it can be as simple as can be or as deep as you want, dude, literally anything. Find a, find a workout partner, find somebody in the business that's going the direction you're going that you can talk to on a regular basis and make a commitment to keep the conversation positive between the yep. two of you, you know, because there's several times where <laughs> the, the neat thing about having somebody else in the business like that is you could go three, four days in a row and just get kicked in the stomach, but they can be killing it. And what you'll convince yourself of is, Hey, we're killing it. <laughs> you know? right. yeah. And that, that helps. And then there's times where, you know, you'll, you'll be out in the field and then your, your workout partners sit at home watching HGTV on a Saturday and you call them up and like, Hey, I just sold three in a row. And then he'll get on the phone and start booking appointments. So this business is hard to do by yourself. Find people yeah. that you can get around. that are going the same direction. I love it, dude. I appreciate it. My friend, thanks for your time. Anything I do ever, obviously we're always here to help and uh, appreciate you sharing today. It's uh, another, another greatly valuable one, my man. So well, syndicate, appreciate you guys. If you need anything, let us know. Neither one of us hard to find. Have a, have a good one, bro. You too. Thanks for having me. See you, dude.